Hey guys, today I'm bringing you an in-depth guide of Montagna. I'll go over his equipment, playstyle, and some tips and tricks. And for those wondering, yes, Montagna is the way you pronounce it. In French, it means mountain, which I think reflects him very well. Uh, his real name is Guillet Touré, and he's the longest serving Gaigen operative. His extra large right shield, which was issued in the 1980s, has seen more action than most operators. And uh, for comparison, I just wanted to show a picture of a real right shield. And as you can see, it's pretty shot up. This picture was taken in 2015, and it shows, you know, just how powerful a shield can be in a real-life scenario. So let's go over his loadout. His primary is the shield, Le Roc, which simply translates to the rock. When Montagne is standing and he extends his shield, his whole body is covered. At this point, he can't shoot, so the best use of it while extended will be with some backup from your teammates. His secondary is his pistol or revolver. I like to go with the P9 as it has a bit of recoil and accuracy. It also has a bigger clip, which comes in very handy when you actually want to use it. While the LFP586 does more damage, it doesn't help much when you want to take a lot of shots towards the head. A headshot will kill anyone regardless of the damage, so sticking with the P9 is recommended. You can also use the silencer if you don't want to be so easily detected. But since you're already quite heavy and lumbersome, I don't find it that useful. That's why I'm mostly going without it. A laser sight is also very much recommended, as it gives you a good point on where it will shoot if you decide to do so. In this clip, I'm gonna do a quick draw with my pistol after aim with the laser, and I managed to pull off a headshot. I do the exact same thing to the next guy, but unfortunately, Mute is right behind him to pop me down. When choosing between a stun or a smoke grenade, you should first look at your team's setup. If you have a blitz on your team, there's not much point going with a stun grenade. The smoke grenade is very underestimated, and it can be used to block off vision for a whole team for a longer period than a stun grenade. Now with all that said, I do want to point out that you can still use any of the equipment that I don't use. There is always going to be different playstyles and whatever you choose and feel comfortable with, you should definitely use. So with this loadout out of the way, let's get into the playstyle. So the first thing to learn is that you have to hold to extend the shield down. This basically forces you to focus solely on keeping yourself from taking hits, and the only thing that can really stop you is the enemy flanking or a nitro cell. And as you can see from the front, Montagne is completely covered. There is nowhere for me to aim, and if this was in a tight hallway where I couldn't get around, I'd have no way of killing him. Since my friend there is standing at a slight angle, I'm having the ability to shoot at his thigh. If you're getting shot at with the shield down, you shouldn't panic, but simply try to cover your left side or angle yourself a bit towards the left. If you want to shoot, you have to remember that your legs will get very exposed. Your right arm will also be exposed, so if you're going to shoot, you should make sure you're either crouched or standing behind something that covers your legs. Something we forgot to show you in this clip was, when you aim, your head is completely exposed. That's why I recommend shooting one-shots after aiming with a laser sight. So as you can see, Montagne is pretty much safe in any head-on situations, as long as he's got his shield extended. If we take a closer look, we can also see that the glass on the sides and above him also provides a bulletproof cover. So since he's well protected against bullets, there's only one thing that can take him down head-on, and that's the nitro cell. The defenders that can have a nitro cell are Smoke, Mute, Pulse, Cap Can and Bandit. If you find a room the enemy is in, you should try to identify as many of them as possible. If none of them are on the enemy team, you're pretty much good. If they are though, you should definitely look out for them. Now the nitro cell makes a very distinct sound and it kinda sounds like when you rip two pieces of velcro from each other. So it's a good thing if you try and memorize that sound because it will decide whether you live or die. And right here I'm just showing the distance for how effective the nitro cell is. As you can see you don't have to stand too far away to not take damage. So if you hear a nitro cell being thrown, make sure you're at least this far away. So what you should always do is to be the first into any room, and if there's enemies inside, you should extend your shield before walking in. As you can see here, I'm punching a hole in the barricade, then extending my shield to give me full cover. This way, I'm distracting the enemies inside while Fuse plants a cluster charge on the window to the left. So as you can see, Montagne is best played with your teammates. He synergizes very well with any operator, as he's mainly there to serve as a distraction. And here's one of the reasons I picked the smoke grenade. The smoke mechanics in Rainbow Six is a bit weird, so it's easier to see players in smoke than it is to see outside of it. This means that I'll see players that are in the smoke before they see me. 
So here I go ahead and try a sneaky one shot and succeed. Like I said before, you should try this at your own risk, but it's very satisfying and rewarding if you manage to pull it off. We keep on pushing in and I make sure to watch my wall to the left as it's got a lot of peak holes. As previously mentioned, I'm completely covered in front, but my sides are 100% exposed. At this point, I should have gone in before Thermite did to make a distraction, but I managed to finish him off either way. I also made sure he was reloading before I went in for the kill. As I hear someone out in the hallway, I position myself right in front of the door. This actually seems to scare the enemy off uh, most of the time. But as you can see here, he reacts by throwing in right to cell right away. Luckily though, I'm just far enough away to survive with 35 HP and uh, we win the match. Another thing I want to mention is that you always try and get up in their face. Most of the time, the unexperienced player will be forced to run away in fear to try and come around you, but that will most of the time lead to him exposing himself to the teammates that you've got on your back. This though doesn't always uh, work. Uh, as you see here, I managed to distract the enemy doc completely and he tries to knife me. On the other hand, my teammates are in the background and completely oblivious to what's happening. So uh, what I should have done instead of just backing up uh, was to do a callout a bit earlier. So that's another thing I want to mention, callouts. Uh, when you're going through a room with your shield down, call out in voice chat like he's here or there's one on me, and then throw down a ping close to him. This will help your teammates localize where he is, and if you know the room by name, call that out as well. And in case he decides you're not worth the effort, just pull out your sidearm and shoot him as he runs away. Something else that makes Montani great as well is the way he manages to completely block off doors. If you don't want an enemy coming through somewhere, just stand in the door with your shield fully extended. Make sure to have someone behind you though, just in case you get knifed. Uh, this tactic is great for when you're planning a diffuser, defending an object, or escaping with the hostage. So, to wrap it all up, 1. Be the first one to go in and make sure you have your teammates on your back. Number 2. Never face an enemy head on in a gunfight as it's incredibly risky and instead try and go for the one shot headshots instead if you feel you have to. Number 3. Position yourself perfectly so the enemy can't hit you and watch out for nitro cells and melee attacks. And number 4. Also make sure to take your time, use your drones and plan every move you make. Be sure to take into account unforeseen events and always have a plan B. So that's it, this was my very first Rainbow Six Siege guide, so any feedback would be much appreciated. I will make more guides in the future, so be sure to stay tuned for that. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And if you liked it, be sure to shoot that like button to pieces. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.